I love to work in industrial places. They have their own reality, they have their own history, they have a memory in the stones, in the dirt, in the smell, in the construction, in the functionality of the architecture. And this is very inspiring and this is also very powerful when you don't work against it, when you use it. If I usually would say uh, this work has three sources, I would include the space now as a major force here we have to deal with and as a major force we have to use. I'm interested in an offer, creating a, a piece with openness in how to read it, how to, to understand it, and to create an artistic experience which might have a future dimension, a utopian dimension. Some historians preferred the Second World War to the First and said the First World War was a national and patriotic war. The whole process is based on three sources. One source is a book by Patrick Uretnik called Europeana, which deals with the um, history of the 20th century in a very surprising experimental way. And Uretnik also has this humor and this irony to look on European history from a very outside point of view. So he brings up a lot of questions which are right now very disturbing in politics. And scientist invented new weapons. And scientists. There is a question about Europe, of course, nowadays. Not only the questions who belongs to Europe or not, but also the fictional idea of national identities and how to deal with political and populist and the absurdity of nationalist tendencies. <laughs> The second source is a staging which I did of John Cage's masterpiece Europe Ras 1 and 2. A very radical piece which separates all the classical elements of opera which usually are organized in a hierarchical order. He cuts all these connections and puts them back together by chance in order to create rather free perception. And the third source is a channel called Euronews, and they have a wonderful program like every hour. It's a way to present news material uh, without any comment, with its sounds, and just naming the day and the location. And you try to make sense of what you see and what you hear in order to understand why this is part of the news. Historians said, but other historians said, and yet others said, some people said, but the Germans said, and the Russians said, while the French said, scientists said, and astrophysicists said, believers said, and some scientists said, some Orthodox priests said, women said, the postcards said, and historians said, 
and some historians said, said, another historian and said, Christians and the pacifists said, some philosophers said, and some mathematicians said, and politicians and public relations experts said. As soon as I saw the text, when we went through the audition workshop stage, I thought, this, this is just great. I mean, even if it's just this text being read out, I will love this thing. It's kind of like some live negotiation with a group of 11 other people on stage because you're trying to achieve the same thing within a scene and yet you've got people all working kind of slightly independently and you don't really know what moves they're going to make. I mean, it's a bit of a game, actually. It's a very interesting process. As a dancer, we are faced with a situation where the piece is not really a dance piece but a, a full composition of so many elements and we are also many performers on stage. I think the biggest challenge is to stop trying to understand what I'm supposed to do somehow. I just try to go with what in that concrete moment I feel also from the others, from the materials and from the music, from the whole constellation. There is a lot of responsibility of taking care of the details of the composition. While Heine has an overview from the outside of the global rhythm, we have to take care of the, the local rhythm of the piece. And that is being produced every time uh, live. This piece is based on improvisation, but Heine is shaping it, let's say, composing this improvisation. It's using himself, it's using us, it's using me. It's neither dance, it's neither music, it's neither theatre. It's a concentrated live action. I try to find a very emancipated balance between all these elements on stage. So an object could be the main protagonist for one moment and the next it's maybe the music and then comes the text. I like to give everything a chance because this polyphony of impressions gives a bigger freedom for an audience to make up what they think about. And it did not particularly matter whether the universe came into existence 6,000 or 15 billion. It really feels as having an experience for all of us, like a collective experience. It always feels like at some point you really lose the control of what you're doing or you give away your entity somehow. It feels like a slow evolving composition of imagery that brings up a lot of possibility of associations and mixes up the whole of the 20th century history. I didn't have a vision of this piece, so everything which came out in those processes and collaborations was a surprise for me. Even the better recognition, and the better understanding of the text when I heard it from another voice. This adds so much with uh, point of views that I think this piece is probably for me as much a surprise as it will be for you. Mm -hmm.